we're live. I'm awake. I say I'm awake. We made the mistake of taking a nap. But today was our last day of testing at school, so I came home. Well, I went to the grocery store, and then I came home. I took a bath, and then I don't remember laying down in my bed. So that means I dozed off in the bathtub at some point. <laughs> we'll wait a few minutes, a few I seconds, whatever. Let's people jump on. We're only. Oh, we were five minutes. Late. I don't remember. And then <clears throat> we can go ahead and start. Everybody will join in. Let's yeah. go ahead and get our podcast beginning going. Ready? Welcome to episode 65 of the Reptile Gumbo Podcast. So Yay! We, we made it another yes. week. Yeah. We're, we're, I haven't seen you in almost two weeks, Robert. I know this is our, <laughs> no. our first time not seeing you on a weekend for like two months. I know. And I'm headed to Colorado in the morning and then headed to Austin the next weekend where you guys may or may not be. And probably not by the look probably on your faces. Not. And uh, if, if things work out the way I want them to, then yes. Right. I, I, when does that ever actually happen? <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> Let's see. We got then, some. Uh, oh, look. I was, was going to say, we Joe got some. Alicia with Tracy. People saying hi. Yes. We yeah. have. Uh, oh, there's Ilana. Well, good. Ilana. I'm happy that Joe Joe's already there. He can help me unload when I get there Friday because I'm going to need help. Go. I got like 40 racks on the truck. Yow. There's, there's Wiregrass Exotics. I know I owed them a blurb. <laughs> they didn't get written this week. It will get written. Though. Dude, it was state testing. And I talked to Dallas about that earlier. And he was like, no rush. Take your time. And was super chill. Like Dallas always is. No, Dallas. You need to yell at her and tell her to get her shit together. Dude, state testing is over. Another year is in the books. And I swear this year was worse. So if anybody can't tell, this is our one-on-one-on-one -on -one -on -one episode for May. This is our live episode. Yeah, this is our threesome. It's our, our three let's not. Episode. Let's not call it that. <laughs> we don't need to start that rumor. Let's, oh my God, no. Let's not, because no. no. This will be, we'll have Lord probably mercies. one more in this house, and then the next live one will be at the new house. So I have this one. Yep. We'll have one in June. Will you be here? Will you be there? I don't know, but it'll still be live. I was going to say, he'll probably be on the side of the screen with Robert it'll for that one. It'll still be live. And then July will start hopefully in our new our new studio. Oh my goodness! I'm super. Y'all just don't even know how much I am super we, excited. Though I'm not even going to say we talk about this podcast. How much Lewis here talks about this podcast? Your last name's Lewis also. The male Lewis in this. <laughs> you could have just said James. James would have worked. I'm no, the, your last I'm the name only needs to be called. I'm the only James on this no, podcast. When I'm mad at you, I call you James Lewis. So no. I don't know the last time you've yelled that at me. That's because it's only when I'm talking to other people about you and you've pissed me off. Well, I don't care then. See, then I use your whole name. James Lewis doesn't roll off the tongue the way John Grant does. John Grant. This is true. Right. Oh. Hey, there's Alana. There is Ilana. But so speaking of our new studio, I am currently waiting for our first like real big piece of equipment that's supposed to be delivered tonight, but I have a feeling it's going to be tomorrow. Uh, that thank, we got from one of our sponsors. Thanks to the Ruas. Wiregrass Exotics. Do you want, we want to do sponsor stuff first and then we'll come back to this? It doesn't matter. Oh, we'll do it. Okay, go. Do your first one. Are you looking for a high quality PVC rack? Look no further than Lone Star Reptile Racks. They offer a variety of sizes for all types of snakes, geckos, rats, and more. You can even order something custom. Shipping is available, or you can plan to pick up at a Herps Reptile Show near you. Visit lsreptileracks.com to reach out to Lone Star Reptile Racks and place your order today. What happened? I got to go to the eye doctor. It was really hard for me to see my phone screen. Well, the good thing is once the new studio is set up, that'll be pre-recorded. Oh, thank God. I'm like... <laughs> we'll find other stuff. Oh, I'm running out of elbows. Darren says, what is the best platform to watch on? Uh, I'd say YouTube. YouTube is probably the best. Yeah. I know Facebook works, but YouTube, the chat's a little better on YouTube and all that. On, on Facebook, have, you just pop up as Facebook user. So I, know, Darren's I, have, I have Facebook oh, I open. Know. I have Facebook open too, but I muted it because it's a little bit of a lag. So I can see every time somebody comments over there, I can go click over and see who it is. Ah. Like okay. one of them is Melissa and the other one is Angie. So cool, Melissa cool. that was with us uh, last Saturday at the show. Oh yeah, yeah. 
So our yeah. other sponsor, the one that is the one that got our first big piece of equipment. Do you want to say there since you still owe them a blurb, or do you want me to just go ahead and say it? You can go right on ahead. So Wiregrass Exotics, that's the Ruas. Go by and visit their pet shop when it's open in Ozark, which is literally it's the only thing in Ozark is going to be their pet shop in a Walmart. That's that's Ozark. But on your way to better places like Troy, Alabama, where we went to college, you can stop by and see the Ruas at Wiregrass Exotics, which I'm excited about going out there at some point this summer and seeing. Me too. I want to see their hot room, which is not, a, not not like a hot yoga room. This is like a room of venomous snakes. Hey, there's John I'm Grant. A, He's I'm here. impressed that you know what hot yoga is. I know how to make fun of people. <laughs> I need to know about things so I can make fun of them. Um. But our, our new soundboard should be here. That's thanks to the Ruas. Uh, while we're talking about this, I do want to mention, so I'm not usually one to ask for uh, handouts. I don't like asking for handouts. I don't like asking for money. It drives me nuts. But we did start a GoFundMe last week or this week, past week or whatever to help buy some of the things that we're going to need in the new studio because our goal is to actually do a weekly live episode. So this will become weekly. I know Katie is super excited about having to do this. but this- I, It's not, I don't mind. Like I just, I, I woke up five minutes ago. <laughs> so um, we won't take naps on, on and- podcast days. Because anyway, we didn't get dinner yet either. But no, yeah. <laughs> we will, our plan is to do a weekly live. Uh, so more like a, a weekly reptile TV show, basically. You'll tune in every week. It'll also still be the podcast. We'll still put it up on all the podcast platforms to do all that. But it's going to be a little more structured. I know, that will tr- I know we'll make Katie happy. It'll be a little bit more structured. It's going to be cleaner, too. Have you told Robert that part yet? The goal is to be slightly cleaner. The, the goal, since we're going to have to start doing this on a weekly basis and my face is going to be plastered on things, is that we're going to be a little bit cleaner and a little bit more family friendly. Uh, fuck that. No. <laughs> no. Uh, no. Well. <laughs> Along the side of our the weekly episodes, we also want to start putting out, you know, five to ten minute videos on different species. So we want to do like little segments we'll do on different reptiles and amphibians. We'll put those out there because we've talked to several other teachers and they would love to have little uh, segments they could show their kids, educational scientific segments they could show their kids on these animals. And because we're moving to Texas, we'll there'll be other people around us. There'll be plenty of animals that we can reach out and borrow. And so that is mm-hmm. one thing we plan on doing that. Uh, on showing more videos from actual expos or record stuff at expos, whether it be just us walking around, which I'm not a huge fan of the just walking around. Um, well, I am if it's not just the panning of ball pythons for 15 minutes, because that seems to be most reptile show videos is just the panning of ball python tables for 15 minutes. So I would like to be able to do more of that. Moving to Texas, I plan on going herping now. Let me get Robert to take me out to West Texas at some point. We're going to do some herping. So I'd like to do some field herping videos. So there's a lot of stuff I'd like to bring to our YouTube channel. And that is the whole reason we started the GoFundMe, which if anybody is is gracious enough, we've already had several people, uh, John Grant being one of them. I know he's here. Our, our buddy Sean Gray from Herp's Reptile Shows, which I've not mentioned yet, but I will. But we really want to be able to do all that. And to do all that, it's going to take uh, equipment. And we're, we're teachers, and we don't have the spare money for equipment. So we would appreciate anything you could give on our GoFundMe. We do still have the Patreon, and the Patreon, I don't want anybody to think we're just trying to get money from everywhere. The Patreon is for the giveaways. Not every month will we have a sponsor, but we want to have that money set aside for giveaways. So what the hell are you watching? Oh, we're going to talk about that in a minute. No, no, no. Back as you were. That's fucking weird. It is. It's on, Yeah. Anyways, that's a weird video. Uh, we still want to do the giveaways, and uh, so that, that money on Patreon will go towards those months we don't have a sponsor. But please, go fund me if you can. If you a dollar, two dollars, seven thousand dollars, whatever you're willing to give, is great. And if you want to be a sponsor in an upcoming month, reach out to us. Let yeah. us know. If you want to be a sponsor for a giveaway, even if you don't have a business, if you just want to say, "Hey, I individually want to sponsor this month," we'll get with us. We can figure out something to give away. And you can purchase it or whatever, and we can take care of that. So that's also stuff. One big thing I want with our podcast moving forward, and as we get to the new location I do all, is I want it to be far more uh, inclusive of all the listeners. I know we have a lot of listeners that like to, 
to, to message us throughout the week, and I want to be able to get <clears> them involved live. Uh, one thing with our new equipment is we'll be able to take live phone calls during the show, which should be really fun. Uh, some people, well, James Bergoli won't be no able to. No Bergoli. <laughs> but other people will be allowed to call in during the show. Uh, so that's one thing we're going to be able to do when now, we move. If, if James sends us some Michaela's bread, Ooh. he can do whatever the fuck he wants. He can do whatever he wants. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. The new one. The bacon the bread. Dude, the bacon maple. Oh. That doesn't look good to me at all. Oh, yes. you shut up. It's bread batter with bacon <clears throat> in it, with <clears throat> bacon on top of it, with some more bacon somewhere else. I made a chocolate chip maple bacon cookie one year, and it was. Oh, it so was I, heaven. I'm a I'm a sweet and savor. Like I love sweet and savory, but something about maple and bacon, I just don't like them together. But I'll eat the shit out of that uh banana bread with walnuts that she makes. Like the her banana bread with chocolate chips is yeah, really I, good. The, the plain chocolate hey, chips. Hey, hey, it's Sean Gray. When we're talking about bread, we don't mean like it's not just like a loaf of white bread. It is sweet bread. It's it's hard to If you are it. not a herps vendor. And you have not been to the Conroe <clears throat> show or, or the Stafford show, and you have not had a moment to savor the bread. Now, see, we're going to try and get Kayla to start doing more reptile oh. shows. She needs to do more herp shows and bring I bread don't need to, all her to do more. No. <laughs> I walked up to the table in Stafford and she handed me the loaf of blueberry. She knew exactly what I was there for because I eat half of a loaf for breakfast on Saturday and the other half of the loaf for breakfast. Ilana on had Sunday. the peach cobbler, which had like peach, had chunks of uh, big pieces of peach, peach yes. in there. Sean says I'm disowned because I say we don't need it at every show. No, we need no. bread at every show. <laughs> well, she no, just let, started making that keto bread. We're all gonna have to switch to that. No, so, we're not. <laughs> so let me let me let me clarify. I want it to be at every show, but I God. don't need it to be at every show. So good. I am curious as to how much bread went to vendors versus versus people. I uh, versus like customers. I'm interested in that just because I, I feel like yeah. Sean Grace said stuff's happening. She'll be doing more shows. Whoop, whoop. Sweet. I'm looking forward to bread. Just make I sure. I know what we were talking about before we got. We'll get back what? to it. I'm but so make sorry. sure that you do not put the bread in a tub and leave it there for a month and a half. Because I then thought it... you knew it was in the box. No, you put it. You bought it. You packed it in the I tub. It for you. And then we never opened it. I don't even eat pumpkin. I know. I wasted a whole loaf of pumpkin bread. Oh, sorry, Sean. I, uh, I like lots of other things, so, you know, that's just one of those. That's a weird thing to say without any context to it. Yeah. But, yes, the the bacon maple bread, I'm definitely getting some I'm of that. I'm down for that. Conroe. That's going to be my birthday present, a loaf of bread. I'll try it. <laughs> so, when you bring it over, I'll try it. Since since Sean is here, and we haven't got to that, our other sponsor is Herb's Reptile Shows. Yeah. So, let's talk about the upcoming Herb's Reptile Show. The next one is Pueblo, Colorado, which is too far away from me right now. That is May 16th, 15th and 16th. That is this weekend. Robert, you're going to that one. Oh, yeah. Leaving in the morning. Right. Robert, Robert bought an 18-wheeler. <laughs> no. <laughs> Robert leased a, a 26-foot Penske for a ridiculously cheap amount. Thank you, Ch- uh, uh John Grant for the suggestion and uh, has it about three fourths of the way full of racks and some of Joe's venom proof cages that he couldn't get back last time. And uh, we're heading out in the morning going to try and make it to Amarillo tomorrow. And then uh, the next day, make it on into Pueblo, hopefully by one or two o'clock in the afternoon. But I'm excited because the truck I did you're 50, 50 when you get one of those Penske trucks, if it's going to have cruise control or not. So, this one has cruise control, which makes that 930 nice. miles a lot better. Oh, so if you're anywhere in the Colorado area or looking for a trip, if you need to go pick up uh, how do I put this, certain supplies that Colorado has, you should go check out the Pueblo, Colorado show this weekend. And then there. Oh, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> I was like, took you a while, didn't it? What? Well, Sean, I'm gonna sit here. Uh, I'll- <laughs> Last time I only brought 16 racks because that's when I was still, you know, pulling the small trailer. I'm bringing 39 or 40 racks this time. Damn. So, I, I look, I, I went ahead you and got to play. I went ahead and got a U-Haul trailer set up to pick up Sunday afternoon. And I'm hoping that sometime during the day Saturday I get to cancel it. Yeah. yeah. People help me out. Go buy you a rack. 
That's awesome. Yeah. Then the following week is Austin, Texas. Which which we won't be able to be at. Maybe. Maybe. I'm, look, I'm holding out hope, y'all. There's a chance. We, there, so you're there's, saying there's a chance. I've got something going on. I can't really talk about it. Um, so we won't. But yeah. Austin, Texas, that is May 22nd, 23rd. Robert will be at that one as well. Then That's Ilana's birthday. Forget Ilana. No, I want to go. No, I can't unsee birthday. it, Sean. <laughs> Yeah, oh, there it is. does. It looks like <laughs> it doesn't have two in my nose. Look at that. That's funny. Uh, no, sir. Unacceptable. That way, that way I can get no. twice as much up than anyone. No. Oh. Uh, then Lafayette is June 5th and 6th, whoop, whoop. which is funny because I'll have to come back to Louisiana for that one, most likely. I'll still be here. I know. And then, oh. then there's the Bread Fest. <laughs> Welcome to Bread Fest. Conroe, Texas, the big 100th. Herb's Reptile Show, Conroe, Texas, June 12th and 13th. If you are thinking about coming to a Herb Show and you are able to, you should come from anywhere in the country to this Conroe Show. Holy it's going to be great. Y'all. It's going to be insane. And it's my birthday. <laughs> Our buddy Chris Eaton Although will be there. Although I will be working on my birthday. Our buddy Chris Eaton's going to be there. I'm looking forward to seeing him in person. He got his yeah. COVID shots, so yeah, yeah. he won't make me sick. Because I don't, I don't, I'm immune. Oh my God. This live video is going to get real fun when I stab him with this pen in just a second. Wait till y'all get to see this on every week. Oh my and God. the great thing is once we start doing the weekly lives, all three of us will be in the same room. That's yep. so crazy. And I, I've got, I've got lots of plans. They're coming. So anyways, we'll get to that. We did all our sponsors. We did all our sponsors. We're good. We did. You talked about the Ruiz. I did talk about the Ruiz. Remember we were talking about Ozark. And go to Troy, and then you we did. I was watching the and then video. Somehow we got. I don't know where we went from there. It's, yeah. But definitely go check out Wiregrass Exotics. They're opening up. I don't want to lie. It's in June, right? Uh, the last date I saw was June fourteenth. But if that Dallas is still in the chat, he can correct that for us. That's true. I do want to say congratulations to our winner from last. I, I screwed up the winner for last month's giveaway. Yeah, you did. Yes, you did. So I put someone's name in the drawing that wasn't in the drawing. They had sent us a message, and I thought that they had sent us the, the snakes, and they did not. Yeah. And they were great, and they told me, hey, I didn't do that. They were very honest. So I actually need them yeah. to send us their um, send us their address and a message. I have something for them. I'll message them. Okay. But then our winner was, I don't want to lie. I'm pretty sure I know who it was, and I'm pretty sure they're in this chat. <laughs> and they are. It it's Darren? Darren. It's Darren. Okay. Yeah. It's Darren. <laughs> I, just, I was waiting for one of y'all to chime in because I was pretty sure it was Darren, but Why? I already screwed it I up once. I just like watching you struggle. I already screwed it up once. Don't want to screw it up again. Oh, well, I didn't want to say it and be wrong. <laughs> I know. That's nothing. Darren is, or Darren, Jesus Christ. Dallas is shooting for June 12th for Wildgrass Exotics Ooh, to open up. That's an awesome day. That is. So you can either come to the Conroe <laughs> 100th show. They're many miles apart. Or so. <laughs> if you're over on the East Coast, can't make it, drive your way to the bustling town of Ozark, Alabama and visit Wiregrass Exotics. And then after you leave Ozark, Alabama, you can either go to Dothan, which is home of the Peanut Festival, which is not going to be happening June 12th. I just love that it's home of the Peanut Festival. Or you can go north to Troy, the best college on earth. Ooh. Suck at everybody else. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so there's Darren. Darren said he reached out to Tyler Colley, who we had on last week, which was our sponsor for last week's giveaway. What? It, I just realized that we don't have our intro for the podcast anymore. Like you used to at the beginning, the first few episodes, you had a little nod to our college uh, in our true. intro. That's true. Not that it. anybody now it's just, else now it's just music. ever knew that except for I me. I think people like the short intro. I know. I, I can't stand, and this I'm not bad mouthing any podcast, just not a fan of when you turn on a podcast and for the first like three and a half minutes is a song, which I think is actually making fun of Chris Eaton right now as I think about it. I think that's in maybe one of those, but that's just not my thing. So I always hit the uh, skip ahead 30 seconds until I get to talking. I like the song that he plays. So I usually he does. To I it. do too. I, yeah. I just can't do it. I have a short attention span. Yes. But there's some that have these like Fiverr uh, people on Fiverr make them a jingle. And I'm like, that shit is terrible. And I just fast forward <laughs> through that. But Chris's stuff is pretty good. He does play some, it's, if I was just listening to the music, but I want to get to the part where he starts cussing and yelling at people. <laughs> that's, not, that's my favorite part. Speaking Have you of watched Eaton, any of his new leveling up videos? 
I should say yes, but I'm gonna. I'm not gonna lie. No, I have not. Man, that one he did with Miguel about social media, how to Damn it, not watch how to do social media, really good. And then he's got one coming up with, uh, I think John Lehman from, from Morph yeah, Market. Morph yeah, Market. yeah. I, saw the, I saw the picture he took today. That he's having uh, guy from, um, from John Lehman from Morph Market. Yeah, that'd be, cool. be great. But he he's doing he is doing a spot for us, uh, an intro for our our weekly. Uh, our weekly spot that we're going to have. That's one thing we're going to have segments on our new show. We're going to have organized segments. It'll be, and it'll be more professional. It'll start out. We need help. We need help coming up with a name for my new segment where I find all the dumb shit on Facebook and the reptile groups and then read it every week on the show. Completely anonymously. The only person who might know who it is is if they happen to be listening, which I doubt. Uh, Or, or me, because you send it to me or John Grant and we see it ahead of time. Yes. Um, Got to come up with a name for that segment. I know what I need. I need a name for Sudlink that I can call them because our internet sucks. I hate our internet. How much money does that pay? It should be working. God, look at that. Just nothing loads. Uh, anyways. So anyways, our weekly WTF segment will have a cool intro jingle thing. Not from Fiverr, but from the amazing Chris Eaton. Who I also want to give a huge shout out to Chris because along with all this equipment we're going to need for our new studio we need some cameras and he is he hooked us up with uh, a new camera that we're going to get to use for our studio and well, for new to us that's, new cool, to us. Sean. that's super cool oh yeah sean said he's working with morph market to be sponsored for herps which would be awesome morph market really and is then vice versa yes but morph market has changed the way people buy reptiles and in a good way like you know King Snake had the classifieds, and it, and it is what it was. I mean, the problem is you had to pay to play a lot for most of it, and you didn't end up getting, you know, five hundred links from the same person for each individual. It just, yep, it became a pain. But and it allowed people to use keywords, so people would learn how to manipulate the keywords. So you would search for a certain snake, but you would get other snakes that weren't that snake because they used the right keywords. It's like Craigslist. Uh, it, it was yeah, yeah. Wolf market. And- more of you can get exactly to what you want. You can pinpoint, you can look for the certain gene combination. Uh, you can yep. see what they were selling for. If someone has sold one, you can see what they're going for. I mean, so, it's how we all place our snakes at the shows now. Every, you see everybody yep. on their phone in the morning. Okay. Yep. Okay. And figured out what their pricing is. That is one thing. It is. It has helped level out the pricing for reptiles. You don't get this giant spike here or there. You know, you may still get a little cheaper at a show than you will online, but so Brandon Millichamp said, where's my ball python I'm supposed to da- uh, paint? Brandon, I did not forget about that. We're going to have craft time this weekend. No. We actually haven't. No, Brandon. She doesn't know what she's talking about. What? Because I have an awesome idea. Oh, geez. When we move into the new studio, we're going to do a competition. I'm going to end up getting these two guys, the same stuff you got me for painting a ball python. And these two guys are going to have to craft, craft time with me. I didn't sign on for this. I don't care. The, I, don't I care. have my I airbrush and everything that I bought for doing signs. So we'll, Shut we'll, the we'll front door. Are so, you serious? Yes. So we're going, to, we're going to have a, a ball python rock painting competition. Uh, I will film that whole thing and put that out separately. And then we will uh, have it on one of our lives and let people judge. who has Thanks the best for life. that, Brandon. Thanks. So Brandon, I did not forget. Thanks. We're going that. to do that. I thought about Does the it have to be a ball python. Yes. It's a ball python painting competition. Yes. yes John, John Grant. Grant. <laughs> he asked if King snake was before he was born. Damn. John Grant is young. He is such a baby. Well, considering he was three years old when I graduated high school. Yeah, he's, he's young. <laughs> oh, yes. For those who don't know the forum days, everybody always refers to them. The forum days were good and bad at the same time. <coughs> Excuse me. I enjoyed them. The, the, like I said, the sailing part was 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 really shoddy when it came to that kind of stuff. I and mean, just, yeah. just go to Fauna Classifieds because it still functions. And then you still find some cool stuff on there. But try Fauna Classifieds and try Morph Market, and you'll see the drastic difference between buying on a forum and buying on an actual site aimed at selling reptiles. So I'm trying to pull up stuff, but I guess I'm going to have to use my phone because my computer doesn't like me tonight. Well, my computer loves me. My internet sucks big, hairy ones. I'm looking forward when we move to hopefully having fiber optic internet, which will be amazing. I don't know y'all stare while I'm trying to pull hey, up Lavissa's here. Who? Lavissa. 
Oh, hey, hello, Bissell. How is your, oh, what was it? Was it egg eating? Was it an egg eating snake? I think so. How is your egg eating snake, Lavissa? Isn't that the, the mystery snake in a bag? You don't want a mystery snake. You knew what it was. It just wasn't supposed to be there. Oh, no. I haven't read these new okay, these new articles on our, our weekly WTF. So on yeah, the weekly WTF. Oh, Lavissa says her new, her say it's not really new anymore, but her egg eating snake is doing well. So that is awesome. It could have gone so much worse. Someone just yeah. throwing a snake in there and be like, they'll take care of it. That, that's the equivalent of someone driving to the end of a, a road and dumping a dog and driving off and go, someone will take care of it. Right. Which, which happened. Which happened at the last, happened at the last uh, Stafford. Someone well, dumped you know, a dog. That happened Friday when I was getting ready to go to Stafford right in front of the shop. One of my employees saw a guy pull in. Our, we're in like a, um, well, you've been there, James, but we're in uh, like an industrial complex with multiple buildings and somebody pulled in the back and dumped a dog out and then burned off. Yeah, like you've ever watched The Office. It's that kind of situation. <laughs> I hadn't even got to the fuck PayPal yet, Sean, but yeah, you're right. Oh, we'll get to, we'll get, we're going to get to that. We'll yeah. get to PayPal. So, LaVissa said uh, that it's doing well. It's currently on a food strike, which that, that stuff happens, but she'll be good. I'm trying to see. I can't read these articles by Stephen because they, they just got posted, I think, while I was yeah. taking a nap. Darren, that's about 15 minutes from my house where that tiger was at the other yeah. day. That, <laughs> the video out the window from upstairs is a friend of mine's wife. She was live streaming it. on. I was watching it on Facebook live. Happen. Jesus. That, that was insane. My mom yeah. sent it to me. People are like, isn't this where you're moving? I'm like, yep. Yeah, it is. Oh. Uh, so our question this week was as listeners, what type of change or additions would you like to see to the podcast? Again, because we're we're gonna be really changing it up. And I really want y'all's input since you're the ones <laughs> listening to it and watching it. I really want to get y'all involved more. And so we'll go through some of these. Some of these answers are obviously from friends. And once you read them, you know they are. <laughs> Amanda Rua said, every time a washer or dryer sings, you guys should have to sing with it. <laughs> well, in the new place, Amanda, that will not be an issue. We will be far enough away from the washer, and you, Robert's washer won't be going off in the background. Right. Or ours, for that matter. So, John Grant wants more cowbell. And as a Mississippi State fan, I'm all good for more cowbell. Sean Gray wants more lizards. Yes. Uh, we'll get more lizards, I guess. James Bergoglio said to have him on live, nude. No, 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 no. What's scary is he's only going to be like an hour or less away from us. It's kind of about fun. an hour. Yeah, about so, an hour. So he could be on live, not nude, as long as he brings bread. <laughs> That's one thing I'm. So if he brings gonna... enough bread, he could be nude. I don't care. No, <laughs> not my house. No, <laughs> not my furniture. He's sitting on. I draw the line. <laughs> Keep your pants on. Oh, I, uh, it's going to be a rule at my house. The one, the one thing I like about the, the new place <laughs> when we get it set up is that we'll be able to have live guests in studio, uh, which will be a completely different situation for us. It'll be, it'll be nice. Yeah. <laughs> Chris Duncan says, let James Lewis respect your wife, James. Fuck that. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, Joe Challenger said, we, make them all live streams, which is the goal. Joe. If that we get so rid of James, we pretty much get rid of the podcast because Robert and I just kind of support all of his ideas. I'm important. I did Damn not it. say that. I just said that this is your brainchild. I'm important yeah. and people like me. It's just sure. a nice way of saying sometimes you can't get a word in with James. You got to learn to cut him off. Robert. Look, look, no, no, no. <laughs> I do all the time. I just start talking. He just sees he's doing it right now. I'm just talking. And every time he tries to start, I just start talking again. And <laughs> well, it, Katie wasn't reading her anime porn over here while we're on, on the that air. That's not at all. And if what Robert it wasn't is. wasn't it surfing a Morph comic Market. Book. I, Thank you I very actually do much. have Morph Market open in one of my tabs. <laughs> so someone's got to keep this book And it's not 8 o'clock. open next to it. My comic books upload at 8 o'clock for each day. So, uh, no. Okay. Speaking of the dog, so we didn't actually mention, speaking of the dog that got left at Stafford, go check out Joe Challoner's uh, clusterfuck of a trip to Texas. That was a rough and, trip for them. And getting back. Oh, at least he I got home. I think the trip two was two. It? No, two was still bad. Oh, that was when the truck broke down. They had half a, half a good trip to Texas. Yeah. And then it just. That was a bad time for them. Then it was, yeah. 
Bless them. But they got through, and they got uh, they they helped rescue a dog. Yeah. They had to spend the night with me one night. <laughs> That's the low light of the whole trip. <laughs> <laughs> They had fucked uh, up vehicles the whole trip, and the worst part was they had to sleep at Roberts. Oh, Al- man. Al- Alicia got sunburned from being in the sun for 10 minutes. Because uh, she's from Wisconsin, where apparently they don't have sun. They and, do. It just uh, reflects it, off the snow. So It was like 92 degrees when I picked them up in that parking lot. Oh, that my which is crazy, because it's like it 67 hot. degrees today. Yeah, yeah. It's May. Well, like two, two days May later, it was... Two days later, when uh, I was at... Um, when I got to the shop that morning, it was like 57 degrees. It was cold. Two days later, it's freaking May. I don't. I, I don't. It's the I'm middle of May. I'm upset. The mm-hmm. middle of May. But oh, let's pull up. <laughs> so, uh, Chris me. Eaton has arrived. Everyone, take a moment oh, and acknowledge Chrissy. the greatness. <laughs> I feel greatness maybe a stretch. There's Chris Eaton, folks. So Again, make it to Conroe. Chris Eaton will be there. I'm going to make him eat like a fresh blueberry off of a bush. If and... you've been vaccinated, he might give you a hug. I'm going to try and bring a fish to make Chris Eaton have to fillet a fish. So we'll bring some wild game that he has to eat. Lance. <laughs> <clears throat> oh. <laughs> I just, oh, we're also planning on bringing stuff to make s'more since Chris Eaton's never made an actual s'more outside of a microwave. I, I'm very saddened, Chris. And it's not like you've lived in New York your whole life. For a s'more? You can't get s'mores at McDonald's? No, I'm sure it was something else. Oh. (laughs) Sorry. You got very upset about that. (laughs) You can't get a s'more at McDonald's. I'm hungry and we're talking about all this food. I'm assuming. Oh. Never been next to a fire. Never been next to a fire. All right, no. Someone listening that's coming to Conroe, please bring a fire pit for this guy. Oh, filet of fish. That's what he was talking about. (laughs) filet of fish. That's actually pretty funny. (laughs) I'm so tired and hungry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it's, no, Lance, you didn't say something offensive. You can't offend us. I don't think I'm offended. <laughs> I will cry about it. Let's go ahead and talk about our giveaway. This is kind of in the middle of the episode. Let's talk about our giveaway for this month. This sure, 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 sure. So our giveaway is from a um, somewhat sketchy uh, rack builder. How do you guys? <laughs> from Lone Star Reptile Racks. You can win. I'm so sorry. I'm interrupting you for a moment. And this is why live podcasts are not a good thing. Darren Watson, I'm going to need photographic proof that this is a thing. A lobster roll at McDonald's? Because there's no way. mm, mm. Let's see what Google says. It's in New England. Google Google GTS that, Robert. The old Google machine. Tracy's all excited that she could be seen. Oh, so in Joe's video with the dog, you can see Tracy. It's 100% accurate. Oh, that's. I'm not sure I trust a lobster roll from McDonald's. I barely trust a hamburger from McDonald's. <laughs> Chris eating the Mick lobster roll. That is, that just sounds horrible. I don't know how. Mm. That would be like down here. They just start selling crawfish po' boys at McDonald's. Oh, I'm no, not eating that. Don't. It has great reviews. What? The what? That is happening don't care. right now. It just sounds horrible. It's an actual piece of. <sighs> yeah. Well, that's something that shouldn't exist. It could be amazing. You I'd would know. never eat it anyways. I need a lobster roll. I like shellfish. I just don't like fish fish. You just don't like to work for your shellfish. Well, I'm not going to peel stuff. No, that's ridiculous. That's why I like po' boys. Okay, I apologize. But I Wilson, really inter- back, I interrupted our... Back to our giveaway. I know. Yeah. So this month's giveaway is from Lone Star Reptile Racks. You can win a free single tub LS70 rack or it is $175 value that can go towards a rack if you're choosing. So if you win... You could put it towards any other rack that Robert sells. That's exciting. Or the single tub is a great, again, we've talked about it before, is a great quarantine rack. A lot of people don't have a great quarantine setup uh, where they live. Maybe they live somewhere where they can't fit extra cages somewhere in the house. But the great thing with the LS70 single is you could fit it in a spare bedroom under the bed. You could fit it on a shelf somewhere in a different room. Bed? Under the bed. It's the first flat. lady, the first two I sold, a lady was putting them under the bed because she didn't want to see the snakes because she was yeah. scared of them under the bed. So she slept with them under her, well, bed. her bed, her kids. <laughs> she she bought snakes for her kids. <laughs> but this, I mean, if you don't have shelf space, it slides right underneath there. Ilana wants a dubia rack. Hey, Ilana, I know a guy who makes, that. I'll trade you a dubia rack for money. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, where is this going? <laughs> 
that you can't beat that deal. I was like, who yeah. else would make What's that Robert deal? Robert fixing to try to get. Darren wants a single rack for a tarantula. That would be actually a really good. I've never even thought about that. You could do a deep layer of dirt in those things for them to dig. I've never thought about aiming them at tarantulas as well. The ones with the windows would be really great. The the new one would be really great for yeah. that. You can still see it. And it still has the back area to hide. Way to go, Darren. You've come up with a new way to use the rack. John Grant, you were beat. John Grant had the, the like, dubias. Finally, somebody besides John Grant came up with a great idea for me. Well, you came up with the idea of the one with the window, James. That's true. Because I'm a genius. I write your blurb for the podcast. Who's Does blurb? Count? Oh. <laughs> His book? No. He's talking about how great everybody is and all their ideas. And I'm like, I got nothing. <laughs> exactly. You got nothing. <laughs> but so to be to get into our giveaway for this month, what you have to do is you have to go to ls reptile racks.com. Com. I was trying to think if it was lsrracks.com, but it's ls reptile racks.com. Go there, check out. A little keyword or phrase that Robert puts up there each week, which I'm, he's going to do now, right now. Right now. And then you keep up with those for the four episodes of May. And at the end of May, send them to us. We'll put you into the drawing. And you can win a rack or money towards a rack. And we can get that done. So that is our giveaway for this month. I wanted to make sure I, I went ahead and talked about that. But now I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to go ahead and do Chris Eaton's favorite part of the show. And that is when we just randomly talk about stuff that's posted online. Which, if my internet was working, I could actually show you what we're talking about on here. But I can't because our internet sucks It balls. really is not working. Which is sad. So Delete that one. I will. Oh, wait. It, it came back. I may be able to do this. So let me, let me see if internet wants to work for me. But let's see what we've got here. Ooh, we got a lot of stuff posted this week. A lot of stuff, but man. Oh, there's Joe Challenger's video with the Husky. Oh, shit. Hey, James, the boa shed. <laughs> the boa shed? Like, since I sat down to start this, I think. I guess it's better than the boa shitting. <laughs> right? <laughs> oh. Chris Eaton, you missed the part where I said this was going to become a more family-friendly podcast. Chris Eaton doesn't know and what that means. your comments right. are not appropriate. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, Chris, get your shit together, man. Going to find a snack. Be all inappropriate Neither, while I'm not here. Neither James nor I agreed to that uh, newer, softer podcast. Look, the yeah, the that. the little animal segment ones that we put out, I yes. won't touch them. They'll be nice and clean. The podcast, it is what it is. Cold Black yeah. Exotics. Hell yes. Red tarantula rack, especially with lights. Oh, we can do that. And visibility. <laughs> I'm also, I want to, when I get there, I want to look, work at making that rack that we talked about with the lights in the back. Mm -hmm. I'm, ex I'm excited. So I'm excited yep. to get there and start putting some stuff and working some stuff out. Yeah. No, nothing to be sorry about, Chris, because James and I did not agree to that. So, I didn't agree to it. I'm, uh, Katie I'm, unilaterally made that decision and neither one of us were like. And it got uh, squashed. Yeah. yeah there's my no respect for my wife. That. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this week, let's see, on our group on our podcast group we had uh, Elana posted the meme Let me see, hold on I can pull it up because shit's working now I say that and then it will stop working yeah talk amongst yourselves mm -hmm. I can't wait to get yeah. to the thing that Travis that Travis posted an insect that scared it's in, it's in my nightmare dude that thing was ugly horrifies me but we'll get to it I'll show everybody yeah uh so once the move happens Chris we'll be Four or five minutes away from each other. Not 45. Four or five, depending on if you get caught by depending the stoplight. Depending on the stoplight. The, the one stoplight depends on how how fast you get through it. Yeah, there is there is one red light. We get through that, and we're there. It's it's going to be close. Which is going to make all this so much easier. Now, now, Robert will have to rush home. Well, rush to my home from work on podcast night instead of to his yeah. home. Because Wednesdays suck for me. <laughs> but that's okay. <laughs> The tentative plan yes. is to keep it at Wednesday, but we will see. Well, yes, Dominique, I do. I just don't have them on the website yet because I have a new website being built, so I'm not really doing any updates to this current website. 
But yes, I have the singles in 70s, 50s, and 55 series tubs. I'm going to share my screen real quick so everybody can see what we talk about so Chris Eaton can shove it. And for the record, you do have to respect your wife. No, I don't, I don't have any respect for my wife, apparently. Why is... Oh, there we go. There's the screen. So there's Ilana's uh, post about what happens when a June bug touches her. But that was aimed, I think, more at Lori. Yeah. There we go. Are we good now? You're in the picture? Oh, you brought cheese. Thank you. It's my cheese. <laughs> Let's see what else we had this week. Oh, this was cool. Crocodiles born. Orinoco that was exciting. They're Orinoco Crocs. One of the coolest Orinoco Crocs was uh, there's a croc exhibit at the Dallas Aquarium. or what, I don't know if it's the Dallas Aquarium. It's the aquarium in Dallas. But they have giant Orinoco Crocs inside. You, you should get up to the top and you can look down and they're just they're e enormous. But Zoo Miami hatched baby Orinoco Crocs. Darren, I'd love to do a a uh, podcast reunion. Maybe we'll get April to come to to uh, Conroe. Carly's life may have slowed down some. That's true. Let's see what else we got. When we have people that work in the healthcare field and work in, I don't actually know what you <clears throat> call April's the medical field. April's is the whatever. She works. <laughs> But both are affected by everything going on with the pandemic. Okay, so. so this snake posted by Miguel Villa. I'm not exactly sure what it is. It's a blue beauty. Is that a blue beauty? Mm -hmm. That's a blue beauty. It does not look like a blue beauty. It looks exactly like a blue beauty because it is a blue beauty. Eh, it looks blue, it looks blue beauty-ish like it's in the family. It has the three different patterns. And several and I talked about it. And he and I talked about it in the comments. Uh, well, because I have as, one right there. I'll say it's not as blue as your new one. About you three feet away from me. Yeah, that new that blue is, beauty. Let's you got be very clear. Awesome. That is not my snake. That is Rachel's snake. Don't know about that. We did. Okay. He he told Just Dominique he does sell them. So you weren't here for that part of the council. I'm taking another piece of cheese. No, I'm <laughs> taking my snack. Cheese. It's what's for dinner. It's See, even LaVista says it looks exactly like a blue beauty. Shut up, LaVista. You're not helping me. <laughs> That's not nice. <laughs> Ilana posted hybrid turtles, how and why. I'm sure I should have read that, but uh, I didn't. But it's got a cool looking picture of a turtle. Oh, we didn't talk about last week that we have eggs. <laughs> oh, yeah. We, uh, we, have, <laughs> we have two turtle eggs because our neighbor found a nest oh, yeah, that had gotten. It. Yeah, I told you, but it got attacked, got eaten by a raccoon and they pulled two eggs out. So I don't know if that two eggs will hatch. From what we can tell, they look like they are yellow-bellied river cooter eggs, which I know are not like super rare, but we got two eggs, and my daughter wants to see if we can hatch them. So they're in the incubator. See what so our happens. Our daughter has the next 10 years of their life planned out, and that's not ever happening. Yeah, she's like, can we do this? Or this? I'm like, we're not keeping turtles. We'll hatch them, and then we'll put them back where they came from because turtles right. are gross. And I love Unless turtles. you have a big pond to keep them in with a bunch of expensive filtration. Yeah, totally. I would love to have a Mata Mata. I've always thought a Mata Mata would be amazing, but that's a that big turtle cool. with a lot of water and they poop a lot. Flavissa, <laughs> Snake Discovery Jr. So I do have some plans with the new studio. We'll be able to allow my daughter, Joe, and Robert's son, Logan, to maybe do some sort of little kids episodes because the two of them are, are very much into that kind of stuff. Maybe we can have a genetics well, corner with Logan. Yeah, I mean... Bill's kids podcasts are going great. So it shows that people like kids podcasts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just got to figure out there's some legality stuff with kids on YouTube. I don't know. The laws on certain things change left and right. And it's YouTube's only if you're monetized. But what if I want to make money one day? Well, I don't know what to tell you. So wait, kids aren't allowed to make money. I don't know the ins and outs of it, but I know that there's some child labor law stuff involved because I know several people who've had videos be demonetized because they had their kid speaking in it. Well, because there was that one little girl <clears> that <throat> all she did was open up uh, packages and toys and stuff, and she made a shit ton off of YouTube. There was several of them, like Preston Plays, and yeah. Kids like to watch other kids play with toys, apparently. LaVissa, child labor laws don't exist in your own home. You can make a child do whatever you need. <laughs> like, you make them do all the laundry, the dishes, <clears throat> walk trash out to the outside because you don't want to do it. It's oh, great. It is Wednesday night. You need to do that tonight, though, and she's already in pajamas, so you get to do that tonight. 
I shouldn't have taken a nap. I could have made her do it. <laughs> Damn. So Ilana said with turtles, she tells people four times filtration. And I don't even feel like that's enough. Like I, I get it. That's probably that's a great rule. But man, turtle shit is gross. So what let's see. Let's see. When you post on YouTube, you just have to specify that it involves kids. There's a separate checkbox, and then YouTube gears the videos uh specifically. Okay, so it's not we can do it. We can still do it. Oh, yeah. And if they want to at some point, we can give them maybe do their own channel. See how it goes. We should have just asked, I should have known to just ask Bill. I mean, he's I was saying Bill Bill does have his kids doing right. videos, and that's true. They're great videos. You know what? Too. You know what? I'm not using common sense mm. right now. No, nah, you know, you're in Louisiana, so <laughs> let's see what else we got on here. Five oh, days. Five here, days of Here's John life. Grant. You can't see his whole face because the screen will show it. But there's John Grant's new anteater. I say Callie Grant's new anteater, really. Yeah. yeah. It's Callie Grant's new ant eater. But that is, that is <clears throat> I don't know what the name have they named it. Is it Ava? That does sound right. I'm sure John yes. Grant's new gets it. Ava. It's Ava. Ava the ant eater. Yep. Because he was saying earlier that he would get he would let Chris hold Ava. My oh, God, Amanda. Wow. That's that's a lot. You're assuming I'm gonna read all this. So there's a if you're looking at the screen, you can see there's Amanda Rua's come our post for the week. Um uh, I'm sure it's got a lot of really good information. But for someone with a small attention span, I just can't do it. So it says why biological complexity evolves is a major question in the life sciences. But the specific selection. Are you going to read the whole thing? Pressures favoring simple or complex traits Amanda posted remain a novel. unclear. Just the first sentence. I'm not awake enough or have enough caffeine in my system to be able to. I know. I know it has this. a cladogram of snakes <clears throat> and their evolution. Is that what that is That's called? That's called a cladogram. I didn't even know that. I'm a biology teacher a and I know that shit. I was going to say a chart. You've been wrong. <laughs> it's a cladogram. Which I, I need to go back and look at that. I, that actually probably would interest me. I just got to do it. Oh, <laughs> I posted this. <laughs> In case anybody's just hearing this and not watching it, it says birds are just named stuff like hot breasted milf and no one does anything about it. Which is. They gave a list of different birds that are actual bird names. And that would be a fun game to play is, is it a bird name or is it not? There's the Great Tit, <clears throat> the Horned Screamer, the Andean Cock of the Rock, the Brown Booby, the Dick Sizzle. <laughs> I've never heard that one. The Bush Tit and the Hoary Puff Leg. Oh my God. So I, I challenge Reptile. Screamers in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I challenge people naming reptiles to do what bird people did and get freaky about it. Oh, yes. So in our chat, they're talking about, we're still talking about, well, some people are talking about turtles. I'm trying to get away from because they're gross, but Bill brings up, and Bill and Ilana both talk about canister filters. Honestly, if you're going to do a turtle, that's the only way to do it. Hang on the back filter is just not going to cut it for them. It doesn't push enough water. It doesn't have enough filtration because turtle shit is just gross. It's just so gross. There's a new species of oh, a new species of prehistoric turtle discovered in Madagascar. Looks like some sort of snake neck turtle. That's kind of cool. Hmm. Oh, <laughs> Travis, Travis posted this, so it's a meme. Apparently, a, a biology teacher in class was talking about, and she's adorable. So you know, everyone was paying attention to her. Adorable means that she's hot, and if she's teaching thirteen year olds, they're definitely paying attention to her. But she says instead of organism, she said the word orgasm. In front of 30, 13 year olds. God bless yeah. you. I've never done that, thankfully, uh, but I have had to explain anatomy to teenagers. Anatomy that you think they would know because they've had it for 14, 15 years. I want to know don't. what's up with this dumpy frog butt that Alana posted. <laughs> oh, okay. So the frog butt made me think of it. So at the last episode, we talked about how there was a video that Travis had posted. And we couldn't remember, but Alana and I had both commented on the video and I couldn't remember what it was. It was naked people pretending to be frogs jumping mm -hmm. off of a bridge. And now like, we're all like, oh yeah, we remember seeing that video. Um, so yeah. I loved Elena going back to the birds. They have many different tits, which is true, <laughs> which is true. I have heard of tits. They're small little birds or breast, but there are many different types of tits. There's also several different types of boobies. There's the blue-footed booby and the brown booby and there's some other boobies. So there's several different types of boobies and tits. You just like to say the word. <laughs> I, I didn't name the damn things. 
Robert, racks with visibility could be amazing for tarantulas, especially considering the most don't need supplemental heat. That came from Bill. That is a good one. So we will we will work towards that too, Bill. Thanks for the yeah. ideas, guys. Uh, LaVisa says she has tits in her backyard. You may... <laughs> hey, if, if it's not on camera, it didn't happen. Oh, my God. Oh. God. Oh, new species of... And I don't want to screw up the same, but it's like a vine snake. Travis posted it. There's a new species. It's got red eyes. It's a green vine snake with red eyes. If you're looking at the, the video, you can see it. That's really cool looking. <clears throat> I know we're going through And Chris, Chris Eaton loves the stuff. Oh, seven of the weirdest scientific studies ever conducted. Because we asked, because uh, we, <laughs> we had the amazing study of what yep. is it like for lizards to fuck in space? Oh my Someone wrote that up. I'm pretty sure that's not how they wrote the grant proposal, but you know, close. you don't know. You weren't there. You weren't there. So, someone at some point said it. They may not have written it down, but I guarantee you when they were doing that, they, they said it. I haven't looked. There was, there was one that was to see how cool Steve Buscemi is. Where in the world? What Your is Google that? Meet attendance is opening. Why? It's not even mine. I don't even use it. Uh, that's sheepy. Uh, Babraham Institute conducted a scientific study to determine whether sheep were capable of recognizing the faces of other sheep. The study concluded in 2001, and the researchers discovered that sheep could recognize the faces of about 50 sheep 80% of the time. They also remembered them from over two years, but not sure the reason behind the study, but we're sure it was better than any of us. Anyways, that's... that's who? Why? <laughs> the question is why it's not... Like, I get it, and I get that someone wants to do the study, but the, the better question is why? Spider-Man well, gone the wrong. The good there? <laughs> we really need to know if these sheep know each other. Right. That way they can... If someone's like, we need to know if they can remember people, because I fucked one, and I don't want them coming back. No, sir. What? No, sir. That's what the person that wrote that. I didn't do it. No. They did it. Moving on. That scientist Moving on, Lewis. did stuff with a sheep, and he wanted to make sure that they wouldn't Moving recognize him. Moving on, them. Lewis. <laughs> This one said, would you allow yourself to be bitten by a black widow spider for scientific reasons? Absolutely no. No. He said, well, back in 1930, Dr. Alan Walker Blair allowed one to bite him so that he could document his experience with the bite. Unsurprisingly, he discovered that it caused excruciating pain. He lived through the whole ordeal, but eventually died of cardiac arrest a decade later. Note to self, don't be stupid, stupid. I could have told you that chickens are vain without You're having to do a science You're so experiment. vain. All right, here we go. In 2004, a paper that was published out of the Zoology Institute of Stockholm University made the revelation that chickens actually prefer beautiful humans. Funny enough, that was also the, the title of the paper. Chickens tend to peck at faces that humans also prefer and consider beautiful. Fun fact, the study was done in Sweden, and Swedish people are known to be some of the most beautiful. Maybe they just don't like Swedish people. Maybe they're, just pecking. Maybe they're pecking at their faces because. But but again, why? Why would you let that? Not that. But what is after this study is done? What is that information used for? Not a damn Look, thing. So so our listeners are talking about this in our chat. What? Um, Lavissa said she's not getting by shit for science. John Grant said John Grant gets bit it. by shit for no reason. Well, he said he would let it bite <laughs> yeah. him for money. And Lavissa has agreed with that. Money, yes, yes science, science no. no. I'm glad we have our so standards. Have, yes, Fuck science, standards. but bring on the money. All right, who hasn't wondered about penguins and their poop? In 2003, the Journal of Polar Biology published a study on the trajectory of penguins' projectile poop. Sounds like a tongue twister. The study showed that the poop this way, they poop this way because of the gastrointestinal pressure and also that it can land about 40 centimeters away from them. Why? Wow. It's like me after Taco Bell. <laughs> oh, I'll see you with our new soundboard. I could have hit the dun dun. Oh, right. It's going to be great. In 2013, oh, yeah, Taco it, Bell for dinner. <laughs> I can't. Okay. The, the, <laughs> anybody that can see the screen right now, just look at the, the gif that's going on the below. Pigeon. Oh, God. I don't. Anyways. Scroll up or down. Nope, leave it there right oh now. <laughs> in 2013, a group of researchers joined forces and proved that what everyone always thought was true. They found that higher the blood alcohol content of a person, the higher they rated themselves and others on attractiveness. Did we need to know that gunk drunk, drunk goggles existed? <laughs> right. I've I seen like, plenty of my... Never mind. I'm not even going to finish that <laughs> sentence. <laughs> 
All right, on to this little party and ping or penguin pe- pigeon. Pigeon. Jesus, it was a bird. Tit. All right. In 2010, researcher managed to prove that pigeons weren't just dumb, annoying birds that pooped on everything. They can actually tell the difference between good and bad paintings that were made by children. <laughs> what? The pigeons were positively reinforced when they pecked at good paintings. And after a while, they were able to determine which ones were good. They could also observe color and pattern cues in paintings that never seen before. Why are like are we running low on art critics? And we're like, hey, we're just gonna go ahead and hire these pigeons to do it for us because it's too hard for us to look at paintings. Yes, Lavessa, everything's a back scratcher if you hold it right. Back scratcher, back scratcher. <laughs> oh, so those are our seven weirdest. Uh, again, why? The, the the question is just why for most of them. Oh, Sir David Attenborough had a birthday. He did. He turned ninety five this week. This past week, did I you love, see the I, picture where they put Steve Irwin in holding the new baby and everybody yeah. next to him? Yeah, I saw that one. My Heart 90s kid heart couldn't handle that shit. I uh, so see, speaking of Sir David Attenborough, I choose to watch documentaries that America has redone and then hire someone like Oprah or Sigourney, was it Sigourney Weaver to mm-hmm. do the voiceovers. I choose to go find the BBC versions. Because I need Sir David Attenborough telling me this stuff. <laughs> Have you seen the I, new one that they just that he just came out with? Which one? It's about Marlins. What? I need to find yeah, that. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's I on just, Netflix. I just feel so much smarter after listening to him. I I feel like yep. a better person. <clears throat> and it makes me sad that he's ninety five, knowing that he ain't gonna be around See, much longer. If they were gonna get any American to voice it, it should be like Sam Elliott. <clears throat> like I think Sam yeah. Elliott would be great, or Tom Selleck. Samuel L. Jackson. Look at these fucking birds. Have you heard this Snoop Dogg one? <laughs> yes. Snoop oh Dog. yeah, Snoop Dogg. Yes, Snoop Dogg's are great. I'll I'll, yep. I'll listen to funny versions, but don't give me Oprah. It just doesn't. I liked Sigourney Weaver's. Yeah, but the but I have all of Planet Earth on my computer, supposedly because that would be illegal, uh, <laughs> from the BBC, and it's so much better. With David Attenborough. Everybody that's never actually un- realized it, his brother is the one that's in Jurassic Park. In case anybody's, I don't know if anybody's ever noticed that, but that's his brother. Cool. That's another Attenborough. Oh, Travis posted this awesome salamander or newt. Was it salamander or a newt? Salamander. salamander. It climbs up in like the bushes and it's blue. I want that. I like it way better than your white newts. Nobody asked you. Your your fat white newts. Nobody they're not fat you. yet. You know, at some point they're gonna look like Job of the Hut, right? It's gonna be great. Fat ass newts. Oh, Lavissa said Ozzy. Oh, yeah, there are some uh great voiceovers. I I've posted them before the oh I forget what he calls them, but it's always the this is how the what whatever does or do. There's a great one on cuttlefish. I've shown them to you before. Probably. Yeah, his is pretty good. They're pretty funny. Oh, there's, there's Joe Challenger's video of him saving the puppy dog and trying to get home. It only took them a week to get home. And my kid. My kid's in that video, too. I thought they took your kid home, too. I was like, whoa. <laughs> it only took them a week and Robert's kid. Yeah, I know. That is true. Logan did make He's YouTube famous. Yeah, he's pretty torn right now. He, he doesn't know if he's going to be able to leave Otis for five days because the hotel is not pet friendly, so... We're not taking in Otis Colorado? with us. Yeah, and I don't. Oh no, he's still up in the air whether or not he's even going with us in the morning. I was about to say that's a uh, that's a long time. <laughs> oh, yeah. I like Bill. These motherfucking Marlins on this motherfucking boat. <laughs> God, was, I'm telling you, that he needs. Uh, could you imagine him doing a snake video? I'm tired of these Jeez. motherfucking snakes. He does one on invasive species of Florida. Tired of these motherfucking snakes in this motherfucking swamp. I wonder if I can get Samuel L. Jackson on my uh, uh, my Echo Dot to say "nice marmot." <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice motherfucking marmot. <laughs> oh, how a Yale scientist and a rock star named an ant for a Warhol superstar. Travis, I'm sure I should read that, but that does not sound interesting to me. James, you're such an <laughs> asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. I am so sorry for him tonight. I'm I'm not. And every night, you're such a jerk face. Tired of these. Anyways, 
Uh, Galapagos Tortoise said <laughs> El Paso Zoo dies after high risk surgery. That was sad. They they did a high risk surgery to save the tortoise. He did not make it. Uh, that sucks. It does bring the mood down. Oh, I don't know if I mentioned this, but there there is a GoFundMe by the way. You mentioned it earlier. I did. I'm mentioning it again because it's right there. Oh. I do know I mentioned it. I'm just joking. I know I meant. You know I mentioned. They know I mentioned it. Anyways, we would appreciate any little bit. It's an awesome little blurb that's posted there too. Yeah, Katie did write it. <laughs> again, any little bit that we can get towards our our studio. Again, it's going to be a weekly show, and we'll probably keep it closer to like an hour, hour and a half, so that Katie won't kill me because I'm making her do it weekly live. But we, what the hell? <laughs> Round one. I just got done. I just got done. I just got this light on my snake coat. I was like, <laughs> all right, round's over. Keep going. <laughs> right, it sounds it. just like a ring bell. That is amazing. <laughs> oh, shit. It's a pendant Here. light and, a, and an ultra light snake hook. Oh, oh. Corey posted a picture of her, her daughter that's afraid of snakes holding an inland carpet. So she's obviously and she's so excited. Obviously not picture. afraid of snakes anymore. That picture makes me oh, happy. Listen, listen to it. Finish him. We watched that this week, by the way. <laughs> it the is new... so gory. Oh it my is. god. It is. The only problem is they they never really play the old school uh theme song. So they have like a remix version yeah, of the, the song. Yeah, the credits. I don't like it. But the movie, Mortal Kombat, the new movie. I Mortal enjoyed Kombat, the movie. Pretty good. I enjoyed it. I, that's that's your movie review for the week. I'll have to watch it. I, I asked. It. I asked. James it is good. Before we watched it, I, I don't said, know when we should, I'm going to watch it. But. I said, "Do you think we should? We could let Joe watch this." And he was no. Like, within the first two ah! minutes, he was like, "Nope, yeah, nope, nope." Watch this. Well, okay. I was going to watch it last night, and I, I sat down on the couch and turned the TV on, and it was already on HBO. And um, Django Unchained was just starting, and you know that movie is one that once it starts, you're just you're just hooked for like an hour and forty five minutes. So I just, I just saw Bill's comment. That rug really brought the room together. <laughs> <laughs> he got it. <laughs> nice a friend moment. of mine, a, a friend of mine, posted a picture the other day. Him and his wife were on a little honeymoon fake uh, uh, anniversary thing, and he had a shirt on that said "Calmer than you are." And he said, "Let's see who gets this." So of course, I got it immediately, and uh, people started posting all the comments, and we all had fun commenting back and forth. Oh. I will promise when we do this new show, I will read more of these scientific articles and I will deliver them uh, on on air in a more professional way. Well, maybe not hey. all Travis's because they're written on Travis level, but the ones that I can understand, we'll just call Travis and have him explain them to us. No, we could just get that girl who told Travis he doesn't know what he's talking about when it came to genetics <laughs> right, to call we'll, in and we'll, explain it to us. No, 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 we'll get that. Go there, we'll we'll get go that there later. Uh, yeah. Nathan posted Good Samaritan saves over 800 baby turtles from a New Jersey, New Jersey, New Jersey, <laughs> New Jersey storm drain using a homemade tool, which may have been her husband. What a tool. <laughs> I imagine I haven't read that article, but the problem with a lot of places people don't realize when turtles are hatching and a lot of places where turtles nest, the cities in those areas will actually make a rule that all lights have to be turned off by sundown. So that the turtles, any lights facing the water, have to be turned off by sundown. So the turtles don't see those lights and assume they're the moon. That's how they know how to go towards the water when they hatch at night. Uh, the moon and reflecting off the water, they go that direction, they get to the water. But a lot of times, you have all these beach houses, and what happens is the turtles turn towards them. And I'm sure here... Are sea turtles? Uh, I don't know, but maybe... No, probably not. But I'm talking about sea turtles, because that's one thing that people talk about when they hatch. And it's a really interesting fact they use the light. I don't think they maybe. I don't know. We'll see. Well, I guess I need to open the article. We'll open it and see what it is. If it's radiator sliders, I'm going to be like, why? I know that sounds heartless. There's a million radiator sliders. I don't actually. We have river cooter eggs in a. You pointed the wrong direction. They're over there. I don't actually know where the incubator is in this room. It's, it's over there. <laughs> uh, let's see. What kind of turtles? Oh, they're Diamondback Terrapins. Oh. 800. Diamondback oh terrapin my babies. gosh, that's so cool. Love. So I thought that one in the corner looked like a terrapin. Well, I did too, but I, 800 of them. That is insane. Wow. Well, they could have just, yeah, she hopefully saved them from this asshole that was stealing all these. Uh, you saw Travis's post earlier about the guy that got busted for uh, uh, smuggling all these different turtles out of the country, uh, including well, there was the guy. Terrapins. 
Well, there was that one guy that was like known for being a great Diamondback Terrapin breeder when they found out all he was doing was going out catching pregnant females and then giving them Pitocin shots so they'd go into labor and lay the eggs. What do you, are you this article? guy was out of Oregon, out of Eugene, Oregon. He pled guilty, so it's not a brand new case, they were, but they were looking for turtles that needed help crossing the road and they looked down in a storm dream and saw it swimming. And that's wow. how they found them all. I don't know what I just did. That's pretty awesome. Your page is unresponsive. Great. Awesome. Sorry, folks. Internet sucks here. But yes, they are dying back terrapins. Oh, Scott Warden posted an awesome picture of his Moluccan scrubs. It's a cool looking snake. Yeah, it's a it's a big, big snake. Let's oh, see. that's oh. Cape Cape May County, Ocean City. That my aunt and uncle lived there. That's funny. Maybe it was them. They saved them. Yeah. It wasn't because they would have told me. Bill, I don't know if terrapins are protected up there. I'm pretty sure they are. They're protected in a lot of places. That was why that one guy got busted for catching wild ones and giving them shots of Pitocin to put them into labor. Ilana posted a great, it's a, uh, a really great little uh, poem. Roses are red. The news is whack. Surprise, motherfucker. Copperheads are back. And it's a picture of a ball python. <laughs> ball python. <laughs> it's a ball python. So. Oh my god! I never even noticed what the picture was. I oh, just Jesus. laughed at the poem. That's, I, <laughs> that's the whole point. <laughs> that's the joke. That is this the joke. Channel, this Channel Seventeen News a few years ago, po they had a oh. video and talking about, "Hey, copperheads are back," and had this ball python in the video, and it's gone. I'm viral like, since. Since you're like, am I supposed to look in the background and see the copperhead somewhere? I never right. even paid attention. Well, that was like I posted this week. Was. I posted a video that I took from. So I like to watch Naked and Afraid. And the most recent season is being shot in or was shot in Louisiana. And the woman says something about uh, water, water moccasins. They show one. And the very next clip is a Burmese python. I'm like, first off, not a water, water moccasin. Second off, we don't have them in Louisiana. What's that? Uh, Burmese? Uh, Burmese pythons. Oh, yeah. Okay. So it is illegal to own turtles. No, let me start over. It is legal. You are allowed to keep turtles. That is what legal means. Yeah, but you can't keep corn snakes unless have, they have red you, eyes. You cannot have endangered bog turtles. The old bog turtle. This was an awesome one. Anything on the terrapins. Isaac Kyle posted this girl. She's a biology student and an artist. And her journal writings that she's been doing of these different species of plants and animals with the pictures she drew are Pretty amazing. Nice. Yeah. I would love to have just the the journal. Let I me mean, look at that. That's those of you that are like, I can't look at that because I'm watching. I'm listening to you on radio. Uh, tough shit. You should go back and look at it. But my internet's going really slow, so I can't show you all the really cool pictures because it sucks. There's a bumblebee. But yeah, she's an amazing artist, and it's kind of it reminds me of like the old school, like like when Darwin, his kind of stuff when when people like had to draw stuff because they didn't have cameras, and so it's a it's a really cool journal. Wow, man, I haven't looked at that, but I'm looking at them now. That stuff is, she's amazing. Aren't they? And my shit still doesn't want to work. She has like exploded views of stuff that she drew. That's, wow. Yeah, and they're, de they're detailed. They're not like cartoony animal pictures. I mean, they are detailed, no. what you would imagine in old school literature for, you know, someone traveling around the world. Darren says, you can't sell or purchase them in New Jersey, but you can own them. I didn't. Oh, I didn't read this, but you posted it. Did you yeah, read it? So I did. Um, you want to talk into the mic? Yeah, I'm coming. <laughs> so I don't follow wrestling, but I'm sure. But you some know who that are. is? I do know who Randy Orton is. Um, and he actually did an interview that talked about how when he was a kid, he would go with his dad, who I was not aware was also a wrestler. Most of them. Um, it's family business. And he always was so nervous because all these guys were so big and he was such a small kid. And he was like, it's cool. I'm just going to go into herpetology instead. And his whole process behind everything was I'm going to go study snakes. But then he really got into the pro wrestling and obviously did that instead. But he's. Didn't he have. If I remember made, correctly. Anybody that watches a lot more money. Anybody that watches wrestling. I'm trying to remember. I want to say Randy Orton at one point had a snake related. Uh. There was something, Viper or something. There was something snake related uh, to his persona. Yeah. it. Uh, but anyways, I just, you know, kind of cool. I recognize the name. So 
Oh, this is really cool. It was a uh, Sicilian that they found in. Uh, oh crap! Uh, John Grant says he was the Viper ring. The Viper, yeah, the Viper. Uh, but it's a cool Sicilian in Sao Tome Island, off of Africa's western coast in the Gulf of Guinea. But uh, it it crawls around in the dirt, so I want one. It fits my whole theme of shit that looks like a snake that crawls around in the dirt. <laughs> and then, oh, there was Frog oh, <laughs> there was this awesome sticker that actually got shared in the Herps Vendor Group. I yes, think. it did. It's it's got a picture of a big ass. I think it's a African bullfrog. And it says MILF, and underneath it says, Man, I love frogs. Frogs, <laughs> but I definitely think Stacy needs that. <clears throat> yeah, and then Elena posted a picture of Elana. Elana, that's why I, I said that. No, you did not. I, I meant it. Posted a picture of a frog butt, it looks like a like a spade foot or something. Some one of those little weird ass. It's cute. It's a toad, I think it's a toad, but pixie. That picture right there is why I don't have mirrors on both walls of my bathroom. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh, we're gonna keep going no, from yeah. that one. No, just moving right along. Oh, there's the uh, the turtles that were you talked about earlier. Yep. And then Ryan Gosler showed a bunch of pictures of his animals, which are really cool. And oh, there is the horrifying thing that Travis put it on our Facebook. It looks like somebody's foot needs a weird pedicure. That thing, I don't <laughs> Vietnamese pulled. I don't know. It's fucking horrifying. I don't know what it is. It's a spider. Is it? Yes. That's a fucked up spider. It's a spider. I had to count the legs to, to verify, but it is a spider. It's horrifying. It's... If that thing came at me. Melissa <laughs> says, I want that. <laughs> I'm sure you do, Melissa. You can have it. It's it's one of the genus of orb weaver spiders, like our golden orb weavers and banana spiders and stuff like that. Yeah, but ours that's are not that fucked up looking. Yeah, that's pretty freaking weird. Could you imagine? How big does that thing get, I wonder? Does it get as big as our orb weavers? Because like that, that'd be horrifying. We're about to find out because I'm We're looking. We're gonna GTS. E Lana, I got Google it. I know how to say your name. Shit. Somebody E-Lana. said it looks like something out of Half Life. Somebody on this <laughs> Reddit board. That I mean, and then it's got like a, it's Let's got like see. a stem, like it's a leaf, so it's got like a stem coming off of it. That sticks up. So one body. of the other names for it is the rolled the rolled leaf spider. Because it looks like a leaf. Are you sure it's not from Colorado? They got some rolled leaves. Oh, that's cool. That's they a this weekend. That's a better picture, I think. Oh, a side picture of it. Yeah, that thing. That's... That thing's horrifying. If they were gonna. Okay, this was your. You were looking at this earlier. Oh yes. What the fuck is this? So okay, scroll back up. It's shooting. Scroll up. Keep going. Okay, so Reggie <sighs> posted this. It is a defense mechanism that this lizard has, and it shoots. Liquid out of its tail. It oh, it's it looks like a sprinkler. It looks like a sprinkler. People pay extra for that kind of oh stuff. Oh my gosh! Yeah, that that's, is. Uh, it's a gecko squirting shit out of the side of its tail. Yep, it's like a sprung a leak. Yeah, I've never seen that ever. Anyways, that that's I'm gonna move on. I can't stop watching it. I know. <laughs> And that's it. We got through all of our stuff, so now I can unshare this screen. And our beautiful faces are back. So, Robert, we decided that your segment is going to be the dumbass shit you see on Facebook. So what's some dumbass shit you saw on Facebook? Let me get my phone out here and slick some of my I'm not calling you Lana. You got an E in your name? I'm going to fucking use the E. E E-Lana. Get over it. Um, Why are you such a jerk tonight? Because it's fun. No. Someone in a, a group asked, do juvenile cotton mouse and copperheads eat carpenter bees? Because she noticed that she had a lot of carpenter bees and then she found a copperhead in her yard and now there's no more carpenter bees. The fuck? That's not connected. <laughs> Those I two agree. are not connected. <laughs> uh, every, everyone knows that they love to eat carpenter connected. bees. Unex- no. That's how. So they do that and that's how they get that stinger in the end of their tail. They absorb the go. stinger from the bees and the copperheads put it at the end of their tail, and then they can sting people with it. Have you ever heard the wives' tale that copperheads could sting you with their tail? Oh. Yeah. Everything I just said sounds dumb because it is, but that's a true wives. Well, it's not true. That's a wives' tale. People believe that that little lime green tail on the baby copperheads is a stinger. 
And not only can they bite you, but they can also sting you. Yeah. Come on, yeah. People are dumb. Uh, I think I <laughs> talked about the Copperheads closing their eyes last week. Yes. So yeah. I want to go. We talked about, mentioned earlier, uh, there was a post made by uh, Corey. Corey had a post talking about Parthenogenesis and Genesis and stuff like that. And, well, talking about the issue, Travis Wyman, Dr. Travis Wyman, doctor a, a, a geneticist dr travis wyman commented that it could be parthenogenesis and then the very next thing underneath that came in this woman y'all need to stop talking about things you don't know and start throwing out words like parthenogenesis when you don't know what you're talking about fucking hilarious i was in the yeah. middle of i was in the middle not of only, crawfish so i couldn't respond. not only was she saying that to travis she was also saying it to dr warren booth Yes, the who stu- literally studied, studied parthenogenesis in snakes. Studied and it so much that he's like, guys, y'all got quest enemy shit. We've already proven yeah. it. It happens. Yeah, because she her argument was, you guys are saying it like it's common. And Warren was like, it is common. It's it is, yeah. more common it's- than you realize. Even in your full clutches, it's common and you just don't know it. Yeah, they're talking about, so, so someone can have a clutch of ball python eggs. And they definitely can have 95% of that clutch be Normal, it can be you had a male, you had a female, it came together, made eggs, but five percent of that clutch can be a partho clutch. Well, and so what, what and he will overlook uh, that. What the whole thing that brought it up was Corey had this bell, this blue eyed lacistic that was born out of a pairing that should never have happened, and she had never been paired with anything in the bell complex. And she yeah, had got a two, bell, they got two pastel or Mojave, whatever the genes were, got two of them from the mom, right? It was partho and and right. came out bell face, came out white. But yep. yeah, this woman's so, sitting there. Well, well, yeah, she's saying that Warren Booth stuff has never been, like I said, never been uh oh peer reviewed, which is bullshit. His stuff is in peer reviewed journals a hundred percent. Her response was, Well, I have a degree too. I said, Well, I've put in pipe before, but they don't make me a fucking plumber. <laughs> <laughs> so oh so our phones. You know. Both went off at the same time this past weekend. And I don't ever go out to eat on Mother's Day or Valentine's Day because it's too crowded. So we always go the day before. So I was actually in the middle of eating crawfish. I I was like, hey, that's Travis. You're going to need to check that message because if I got it, you probably got it too. (laughs) I had to join. I had to join the group just so I could watch it. Yeah. LaVissa has a question. In Parthenogenesis, is the pattern of the baby the exact same as well? Same as the mom. No, no, it's not a clone, which is a common well, misconception. It is, but it's not. It's not an identical clone. Because if she's, I'm very much a layman's term here, but if she's heterozygous for anything, it will get two copies from her, yeah. which makes it homozygous and will express that in the phenotype. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Yeah. So, like, so it, if, it was, <clears throat> if it was a normal ball python, just a normal, and she had babies. They would come out looking normal because those are the genes. It would get two normal genes from mom and it would come out looking normal. But it would not have the same identical pattern, but it would have a normal phenotype, a normal physical expression of the gene. In Corey's example, she had a snake that carried one copy of a bell face. I can't remember what it was. It was either Mojave or Lesser or one of those. And uh, she had a bell, a white snake born, which should not have happened. But it got two of those copies from the mom and came out white. So yeah, but if you want to, Lavessa, if you want to read the whole thing, go to the World of All Pythons Facebook group and join. That's a cluster. That's a cluster. No, then, was it was it World of All? No, that was P Regis. Oh yeah, you're right. It's in P Regis Undergrounds, and uh, look up the post by Corey Martin. Um, you'll <laughs> it's, if you just search her, it's pretty easy to find, and then go through the. Go through the comments and you'll find it. Travis actually gives a really good, and Warren both give yeah. really good explanations. And uh, this this young lady decided that these two PhDs didn't know what they were talking about. Well, and then she started to back like backtrack. And then when Warren started having an actual conversation with somebody, she just disappeared. Yeah. So yeah, I think she realized she was in a little bit over her head. <laughs> God, I just I I love that. Don't talk about things you don't know about. Okay. We're going to keep talking about this thing now. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. I'm sure, we'll get a message from Travis in a couple of weeks whenever he le- re- listens to this. 
Well, listen, if you have any questions on Partho, Travis is a great source and Dr. Warren Booth. Dr. Warren, Warren Booth will message you back as well. They're both great. Um, I said Warren used to get sheds from people. They'd send him sheds to check and see if this animal was a Partho baby. And he's gotten so many of them because it is so common that he finally said, guys, quit sending me stuff. I don't need any more. We proved it. We're good. So, uh, hey, Gina. How's it going? Gina's in on the chat. Anything else dumb that you saw this week on Facebook? So there's a few things, but uh, some of them are really long. Like the lady today who is moving from, she's obviously a city person and she bought some land out in the country here and wants to know, she's going to drain her pond and cut down all the bushes and the hell? all kinds of stuff because she doesn't want animals. She doesn't want reptiles on her property. You know, and my comment was, I, yeah, I hate whenever wildlife invades my wildlife. <laughs> People, yeah, I just, she's literally bought five acres in the same Houston national forest that doesn't want animals coming into her property because she has kids. Can someone get rid of all these animals out here in the wild? This is right. I moved from the city to get away from people. I didn't want to be near animals. Oh, dumbasses. I actually found several articles this week, and I'm trying to pull up, but my internet sucks. Is it big. my turn to talk? Yeah. You got something to talk yeah. about? I do. Talk away while I pull this shit up. Okay. So, with the summer approaching, a lot of local libraries are going to be doing summer reading programs. So, our local library is doing Tales and Tales, and it's T-A-I-L-S, and Tales, T-A-L-E-S. And they've actually partnered with our local zoo, and the animal ambassadors in the education program now have their own library cards, and they've actually done, like, re they're reading the stories with some of the animals from the zoo. And so I pulled up, I actually took a screenshot, so in case the internet was messed up, which it is. Uh, <laughs> it says we're going wild over the 2021 summer reading program. Theme. Hey, look, Warren Booth is here. Tales and tales. <laughs> you see, his, you say his name and he shows up. <laughs> he's like a warlock. Oh my lord! I'm so you glad he's here because my explanation was so rudimentary that I really want someone that you know the man, the man himself. That's great. What the fuck does Warren so Booth that, know? Hey, Warren, how about you only talk about things you know about? So right. what? For those of you that are not watching and cannot see his comment, it says, LaVissa Ratliff, it is not. The baby is not a clone of the mother. It is basically a half clone. Heterozygous genes of the mother will be homozygous in the offspring. So a het albino would provide albino or normals, for example. Also, pattern is like fingerprint, not hereditable. Heritable. 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 In an exact Ooh. form from the parent. Yes. I said all that. I'm just as smart as Dr. Warren. You shut your mouth. No, I'm not. I'm totally not. But I did have that correct, at least. I feel like he's like Beetlejuice. Who else can we do this to? If we just let a name <laughs> three times. Like Travis, right. was, Travis was on Facebook earlier, so he could be here and we just not know it. Travis only gets on Facebook once a week because that's when he sends us a message from everything he heard in the podcast that week. No, he oh. gets all more than that because he posts on our group every day. Uh -huh. just that is true. That is true. He does post a ton of stuff that I, I don't read. But we appreciate it, Travis. Every I read most of it. Every day. Oh, so I... I, I wasn't done. Oh, I'm going to go ahead. My bad. You were starstruck by the fact I that was. Warren Booth is Warren listening Booth. to your Do podcast. Doctor, doctor, Dr. Excuse Booth. me. Dr. Warren Booth. I've heard his name, but I don't actually know who he is. Um, <laughs> He's a doctor. I know that. His name's Warren Booth. I, look, we did I'm, say his name. We we did say his name three times, so maybe that. <laughs> I meet people because of you guys. Um, anyways, so they have partnered with the Alexandria Zoo, and they're going to be producing virtual story times featuring the different animals at the zoo, because the library and the zoo are just now coming back from all of the. COVID situations where they're allowing people to come in more frequently, but we still can't do the groups in summer programs like we used to. So Champ and Ivy, which are the possums in, um, at the Alexandria Zoo, became the first marsupials to ever receive an honorary library card. So the summer reading program starts in June. And so that is 
going to be a really cool thing to check out. And if, yes. if you don't live in the area, you can look at it on Facebook. Your local zoo might be doing something. A lot of libraries, it's kind of like vacation Bible schools. Well, no, There's like five themes and you just pick which one well, you no, want. Well, now everybody's opening back up. You're going to see a lot of stuff, especially over the summer. They do a lot of stuff over the summer. Yeah. The zoos and stuff. So Eat. you would so. think that, oh, that possums getting library cards is weird, but I went to a wedding of two rhinos. Oh, that's were you, okay. were you there for the honeymoon also? No, well, that's there used to, there, there's a wild animal park nearby here, and um, they had a wedding for their two rhinos when I was in high school, and we had a school trip out there. And our justice of the peace, they did a full wedding ceremony and everything, and married the two rhinos. Where, what we did an event in Lafayette one day. Oh, there, they there married was a snakes. snake wedding. I did. We did do an event for that. I had, I wasn't there that day. I, I was somewhere I was there. else. We, we brought animals and there was a big reptile mm -hmm. event and it ended in a, a snake wedding. wedding, which it, 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 it's weird. It, it is weird, but it was a very educational day for reptiles. We brought lots of really cool stuff. And Ilana, yes, if you want to give me a uh, cliff notes on every article that gets posted on our Facebook page, I'm all for that. I, I have no shame in admitting that I don't like to read and I have a small attention span when it comes to stuff like that. If you want me to do something physically, yeah, I can go do stuff. But man, I just can't. I can't concentrate long enough to read. Now I will say this: the few books that I've given him, and I'm like, you should read these. I will give him the audio version that he can download on his phone, and he listens to them while he's in the car. So I had a couple articles. I uh, found one box turtle ban, a proposed Virginia regulation to restrict keeping of native reptiles and amphibians. And so this ban would basically make it illegal to keep native wildlife, especially like box turtles. And so I'm torn. On this subject, and the one guy in here who and I want to get his name right, uh, his name is Larry Mendoza. He is the former president of the Virginia Herpetological Society. He makes a good point. If you if you make it illegal to keep native wildlife, you have now made it harder for people to learn about native wildlife, which then in turn makes it harder for people to want to take care and protect native wildlife. This I know it seems I, I know it seems uh, counterintuitive, but Many people, many kids, their first pet is a box turtle. They found it roaming around. I had one when I was a kid. They're awesome. I found one the other day when I was cutting grass. That's true. So, yes, as much as I agree with their state herpetologist or whatever who said <clears throat> uh, wild animals belong in the wild, that is true. That is true. But a kid raising a box turtle could turn that kid into the next state herpetologist or biologist or someone who f goes out and starts a program to help save something else that's endangered. And so when you remove these things from being the norm, being something that they're around, they're going to care less and less about it, which is why I've always said zoos are vitally important. <clears throat> people don't, people see a lion on TV and that doesn't mean shit. They see it, they go, Oh, it's a lion, whatever. It's completely different when you're in a zoo and it's on the other side of the glass and you're inches away from it, looking at it in the eyes. And so we've talked about four on past podcasts but a ban like this is very dangerous. I get that they're trying to stop people from poaching, going in and collecting a bunch of animals and removing them from the wild, like that guy in Oregon, like you talked about earlier with the turtles. Mm -hmm. I get that. That is bad. I agree. But a seven-year-old who finds a box turtle and wants to keep it as a pet, if done correctly, is an amazing thing. And they argue in there that a lot of people keep these animals incorrectly. That's fine. You could argue that all you want, but a lot of people keep dogs and cats incorrectly, and we're not stopping them from doing that. So I think there's more good to come from allowing people to keep a garter snake or a corn snake or something they caught in the wild than there is from stopping it altogether. And so these bans, I think, are horribly dangerous. <clears throat> and if you're in Virginia, uh, please, please pay attention to that and try and speak out. And now I've got... Stephen Livingston sending me a video that I've got to watch while I'm talking on, on is that a podcast. What he said? He no. said, watch it now. No, then pause here. it and watch it later. But he James. sent it and I'm trying to be nice. No. Um, I do want to bring up some stuff going on in oh, sorry, US ARC right now. Is it the South Carolina thing? Yes. Didn't they just win that? It yes. Uh so Rob Christian um at Nerd yeah. posted um yesterday said that the backdoor bill in South Carolina got shut down. It was zero to 44. So not only did it get shut down, it was unanimously shut down, which I feel like Good. is a really big deal. So again, thanks for everybody who emailed and called. Um, let's keep that same energy for the next bill. So there, there's a lot going on in USARC. There's a lot going on 
across the country in multiple states. And these people are pulled in all different directions trying to fight battles for us and for our hobby. So definitely check out US ARC. Definitely become a member. You will, you know, shirts are back ordered, which is totally fine and understandable. I think it's awesome that they had so many people join that they had to order a new shipment of shirts. Um, so you do get a cool shirt when you become a, a certain level of a membership. And yeah. Okay. James. He told me to watch it. Oh my gosh. And it's just, it's a turtle walking. It takes forever. My oh. thing is slow. The turtle's slow. My internet. There was slow. a box turtle. It's beautiful box turtle in our neighbor's yard. I saw her when I was cutting the grass. Yeah, she was not very happy. She was not. Probably because the lawnmower was loud. Yeah, we picked her up to help. She tried to squeeze through a fence. We got her through the fence and the look on her face. She was not. She very was happy. done. She was like, "Put me down." Let me. Speaking alone. of box turtles, and we talked about turtles earlier. This was also really cool. It was uh, the St. Louis Zoo was trying to do a study on on their local box turtle population because of a reptile related disease that was found in aquatic turtles. And they're trying to see if they're spreading into these box turtles and the range of these guys. And the way they were able to catch the turtles was very innovative. So normally you would have to go out with a group of people trying to find these turtles and it would take you a while to try to find enough turtles. What they did was they hired a guy with dogs that could sniff turtles. Yeah, so this guy had, uh, oh, I'm trying to remember what kind of dog. Oh, sp- they are Boykin Spaniels. I was going to say, it has to be some type of a Spaniel. And what would happen is he, they learned the scent. They went out, and they wanted to find 10 box turtles. They were able to find them, no problem. The dogs would gently pick them up in their mouth and bring them to them, and they put little trackers on the turtle, and they let the turtle go. But these dogs could find turtles. So... With there being five days of school left and my students thinking they can come and play and I'm a babysitter, we have none of that. So I printed some really cool science articles to talk about. And one of the ones I printed is about a dog named Python Pete or Pete the Python Hunter or something. <laughs> Anyways, I haven't read the article yet. So it seems to be our theme. But we I find did, great articles. We just don't read shit. I printed copies. We're going to do it tomorrow. I can tell you all about it next week. It, but it, I, I skimmed. And basically, it's a, it's someone who trained a dog in the Everglades to help them hunt down the nuisance pythons that were there, which I thought was kind of cool. Here's hey, the um, Go ahead. B- real quick, back on that South Carolina thing. So it failed their Senate. They sent it back to the House. The House amended it, passed it, and now they're sending it back to the Senate to vote again next oh, week. Son of a bitch. They amended it, pretty much took a couple of things out. They took out the the... Uh, non-native venomous stuff, but all the permitting and banning. Uh, ban the, oh no, they still ban the listed non-native vin- venomous. Um, the permit, hundred dollars per animal, or no, per person. They changed it to per person instead of per animal, and they right. they left the exemption in for AZA zoos, and they left where uh, it has to be for exhibition only, and it can't be for traveling, and you have to be open thirty hours a week, and. Yeah, so it's still shit, but hopefully it goes back to the Senate, which killed it zero to forty-four, and they do it again. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out what Bill was talking about because we talked about fifteen things in a span of five. We're minutes. talking about the dog. Prob- that he's probably referring to. Um, he- Bill is probably referring to the dog with the python. He is running python. through the underbrush as bait. The turtles. You want turtles? Why would a dog be bait for a turtle? No, that's turtle. Wait, I'm, oh, the python dog. I missed that. I was... The oh. whole thing I just I was, talked about. I was, I was prepping the next this thing. This is you being a jerk. No, you do the same thing all the time. Respect, James. Shut the hell up. Anyways, Moraine State Park. Which... And yes, Darren, next year, there are other teachers in Louisiana with class pets. So. Uh, this is in... For anybody in Pennsylvania around Moraine State Park, I thought this was Leap into Herpetology Intro to the Reptiles and Amphibians, Sunday, May 16th. That's this Sunday. Uh, 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. Pavilion number 7, McDonald's Launch Area in Moraine. Join local naturalist April Klaus as she introduces you to things that creep, swim, and slither in the diverse habitats of their beloved Moraine State Park. How cool. And so that would be a cool two-hour little thing to learn about your animals and your reptiles and stuff in that area. I saw that. I know we don't live in... Pennsylvania, but I figured I'd throw that out there. I'm going to make myself a shirt that says, respect my authority. Respect my authority. And, you have to, and, and I'm hey. going to wear it on podcast night. <laughs> when, I, hey, 
when I was a cop, my ticket book, I had that sticker on the back of it. So when I was writing you a ticket, you were looking up at that Cartman sticker nice. with the respect nice. my authority. Yep. Oh. E-, e Lana should have some baby guinea pigs soon. That's expensive snake food. I you can look at me all you want. That's Oof. okay because when I get my first grade self-contained classroom, I'm having a baby guinea pig. <laughs> you can have it at school. I will. I'm going to bond with it over the summer so that it's ready for my sweet little babies. And then I'm going to take it to school. So our Because our, we're putting that positive out there that I'm getting a job. I need a job too. <sighs> You're so, going to get a job. There's so many I of them know. over here. I just hate waiting. Like they're not even going to interview for another two weeks. And that's that's what's killing me is at this point, we're just, it's hurry up and wait. I'm ready to get over there and get my podcast studio set up. Did I mention that? Again, we have a. You uh, mention it to us all the time. We have a GoFundMe once or, to help us once or once, once or twenty times. Again, an hour, a couple of bucks. I want to say a big thanks to, to Sean Gray because he did donate the other night, and it was it caught me off guard, and mm -hmm. it's going to help us do a lot too. We've had some other people donate as well, haven't I you? I said John Grant earlier. Okay. And the other one, I didn't hold on. I want to get the other person's name out there because they did. They were the first one to donate because they're an awesome human being. That's so why I want to make sure I get it right. Maybe if I can figure out how this stuff works. Yes, Lavissa. That's also military life. <laughs> Hurry up and wait. <laughs> Hurry up. I can't get to their name because their internet sucks. Sucks, Paul. I could probably do it. But we did have. I don't even know how to open the program. So. Oh, it was Jeff Frederick. He was our Thank first you one. Very much, Jeff. So Sean, John, <clears throat> Jeff, Sean, John, and Jeff. I'm on the word. And guess what? Anybody listening, you could be next, please. Pretty please. <laughs> no, but like I said, the goal is to we'll do a weekly live just like this, more organized. We'll actually have segments and we'll have intros for segments. And it's going to be I've got I've got things envisioned in my head, and these two will just show up on the day. I'm gonna get to I'm, I'm I'm gonna get really I'm gonna get really emotional for a moment and get real with you. So if, if you don't like that that part of life, you can just earmuff. This right here is why I fell in love with him, though, because he gets so excited. Well, that and my Shut up. personality. Not at all. Look. Um, <laughs> Look. <laughs> he gets so excited about stuff like this and teaching people about reptiles. And it, uh, this is awesome. why I put up with you, babe. It's going to be awesome. We're gonna have, <laughs> my goal is to have kind of like a little like news desk type thing for us to sit at and we'll. Uh, we'll have several camera angles we can flip to, and eventually I want to have a green screen where I can do some cool stuff on that. I've Bercoli, we're not talking about dinner because it's almost 9 o'clock, and I haven't had dinner yet because I may have taken a nap after school. And then we're going to get bread delivered to us weekly at our podcast studio? <laughs> Bercoli's just going to like knock on my door like, I'm here for the podcast, bitches. <laughs> I brought as, you bread. As long as he's got clothes on. <laughs> I, I am looking very forward to being able get to get an extra chair just for when he pops by. <laughs> I'm looking very forward to being able to take live phone calls from you guys. So when we have things, uh, we have guests on, you want to ask them questions, you can call in. Uh, that'll all, I'll be able to do that. So I'm, I'm, I'm excited. These changes are going to be great. And Katie's just going to have to suffer. The nap was really great. Like I'm starting to wake you know, up it's now. Be really great. Just hungry. Dinner. And I ate all my cheese. Dinner. Yeah, I ate some of that cheese too. Okay. No, I went and got the rest of the bag. Now we're cheeseless. cheeseless. Just we don't have cube cheese anymore because I'm bougie and I buy it already. Just so anybody knows, at any time we probably have like seven different types of cheese in our fridge. <laughs> it's a problem. Oh look, it's Kayla. Kayla. Even though it says James. So so Kayla, I, I need bread. <laughs> <laughs> I, I need I need bacon bread. Connor is only you a know, month away. Here's the thing. I bet you could message her. I bet you could message her and be like, hey, I'm an hour away. I'm going to take a road trip and y'all could drive to Conroe, pick up bread, that's and a, then go back to That's a long Roberts. road trip for bread. Yeah, but it's maple bacon bread. That's true. It is bacon. It's totally worth it. Can I get pumpkin bread at any time of the year? That's the question. Because like... I that's my small like white girl thing. I like pumpkin flavored I can't stuff. Can't stand anything pumpkin flavored. And so if I can get pumpkin bread any time of the year, I'm happy. And then I don't have to figure out how to make it, so we're good. You're never gonna. I saw something the other day. Oh, what was it? It was a uh, Trevor um, from the Daily Show. Okay. 
Trevor Noah. Trevor Noah made a joke about things, useless things, and he pulled out a can of uh, pumpkin puree from the back. I'm like, we did. We had a can of pumpkin puree on the back shelf of our ship for the longest time, and we were never going to make anything with it. We had plans. I bought it to make you like a pumpkin. It was never going to happen. But it was never going to happen. I don't eat it. Ooh, ooh, Kayla said there's pumpkin bread year round. I don't have to wait till November with the rest of the white. So when girls. you start to annoy me, I can send you. You could be gone for two hours, so you can go pick up bread. That's a, that means I have to drive. I can drive around. I'm assuming I can drive around Houston to get there, right, Robert? I don't have to drive through Houston, do I? That's uh, pretty much the fastest way. Son of a bitch. You'll be fine. Quit your bitching. My goal is to not enter Houston. You're fine. As much as possible. You're not going to do anything with me and Josephine then. Because <laughs> we got all kinds of plans. That's true. I've never been to the Houston Zoo. I want to go there. That's not far it's from like my house. It's like 10 England minutes. Cheese pumpkin. 15 minutes. What the fuck is a New England cheese pumpkin? <laughs> yes, white girl bread. I would love some, some of that pumpkin white girl bread. <laughs> Seriously, Bill, what the fuck is a New England cheese England pumpkin? Cheese pumpkin. Makes kick ass pumpkin bread. Does it does it taste like cheese? Because I'm in if it tastes like cheese. You make some bacon in there, I'm done. Ooh, we have a little bit of pumpkin bread left over there on the counter. Fuck you. That's a pretty pumpkin. It's a it's a pumpkin. Ooh, cheese pumpkin soup sounds good. <clears throat> I guess. Anyways, anybody else have anything else to talk about? Any of our listeners have anything else besides? I mean, we can sit here and talk about bread all night. That's it's a hybrid possible. pumpkin. I got to go get ready to leave at the one in the morning for a fucking I, I have hour to drive. eat dinner, or I'm going to vomit. <laughs> Darren says they sell it at McDonald's. They don't sell yeah. it at McDonald's. It ain't shit. That's right. You, I, can, I, you can get it as I, a side for your lobster roll. <laughs> I did. Uh, I googled that. Gina said the Houston Aquarium is cool. I didn't know they had an aquarium uh -huh. in Houston. Yep, that's actually yep. third on your kids' list. Galveston has an aquarium. I didn't even tell her to look at stuff in Galveston. Because that's only does like she know that, play. Does she know that Crocodile Encounter is 10 minutes from our house, 15 at the most, and it's the huge crocodile and alligator facility? I don't like to call it a farm because it's not a farm. It's literally all in 288. Like, is it, is she, it good? Um, it's great. We'll have to tell. We'll take her. What's then. the one we pass when we go to Beaumont? Crocland? That's, no, that's Gatorland. Gatorland. Not yeah. as good. Oh, she, so five the, times as big. As the Gatorland. first thing on her list is the Houston Museum of Natural History. She is totally James Lewis. I child. love natural history museums. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, we, we've been we've been trying to make it there for two months because Body Worlds is here till the end of May. And uh, if you've never been to Body Worlds, it's an awesome, awesome exhibit. Oh yeah, that's the yeah. you see the bodies the, without the skin and all. Yeah. So Elana said her eggs are doing good. She had Burmese python eggs. She did. Oh, she's talking about the downtown aquarium restaurant that also is the aquarium. It's a Landry's restaurant. They don't have uh, the tigers there anymore. But yeah, it's a, it's a still well, a cool. The tigers aquarium. probably drown. They don't do well in aquariums. Stop, James. I didn't put them there. Apparently, no. they put them there. No. no. I agree. Museums do rock. So I love the Smithsonian. Natural history. Joe's favorite Blues. Smithsonian is the Museum of Natural History. Also. Love that. I love that place. I can spend all I have spent all day there before. Joe and I. Yeah, have. me too. More than once. And yep. they had they may still have it. It was like a temporary thing, but it felt like it became a permanent thing. The butterfly. Oh, it became permanent. Yeah, the butterfly garden became a permanent thing. Katie, look what Lana just said. I know. I know. <laughs> I'm, we're not talking about it because James has a plan. He has something in the works, and I'm not bringing it up anymore because I like surprises. Okay. Um, but that's yeah, really cool. So <laughs> we also have, you know, here in Houston, we have the uh, the Lone Star Flight Museum over at Ellington Field, which is right by the shop. And if you like airplanes, that is a blast. That place she, is awesome. She really enjoyed... Uh, the museum of air and space, the air and space. Air and space that's a cool. One. She, I, when I finally talked her into going to it, she really enjoyed it. So, y'all have like air shows there? Oh, yeah. And they go, like, you'll see the blue angels and stuff fly right over the house here. That's so cool. cool. Do y'all, yeah. okay? I, I know the answer to this, but is there a rodeo we can go to? <laughs> the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo, the largest rodeo in the country. I want to go. I haven't been to it's, a rodeo. I've been forever. to rodeo since college. This year, but I love I'll have rodeo next year. Our, our college so I had a rodeo the, team. I worked at the San Diego Aerospace Museum when I was in college. I worked in their um, restoration department, which was down in the basement. 
Nothing but World War II and Korean War vets rebuilding airplanes from memory. It was, I was 20 years old, 21 years old. Yes, Elon, I have plans. It was the best job I've ever had in my life. The only thing that sucked is sometimes you'd show up to work in the morning and you'd be like, where's old Joe? And they're like, well, old Joe passed away last night. Because, you know, wow. Oh, way to get the those guys were, that got dark you know, quick. Those Shit, guys man. were in their 80s. Those guys were in their 70s and 80s then. That was 20 years ago. That got dark real quick. I know. But other like, than that, it was these, a great job. These lovely, amazing times, and then they would die. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Darren watches <laughs> horse auction every like Saturday night from on like, TV. like online. You're watching an online horse auction every I'll Saturday night. Horse, I'll take them to a horse auction, Darren. There's one. About an hour from here, that's really good that we used to always go to. That way, they can experience a Texas horse auction and eat a burger there because they're awesome. They're not the burger, so. is the burger made from the horse? Is the question. I hope not. This one didn't sell is, pretty good. Oh my god, everybody, we're having butterscotch for dinner. She didn't make it, nobody wanted her anymore. She's a little tough now. Oh my god, oh, don't you let don't you let his disrespectful podcast attitude fool you james lewis spoils me ah no respect you get no respect uh-huh oh all right i'm hungry robert's got a pack he's got a long drive ahead of him james is gonna eat dinner when i'm done with it Ooh. so <laughs> robert if people want to get a hold of you how can they get a hold of you ls reptile racks.com low star reptile racks facebook instagram <laughs> Darren. I'm sorry, Robert. McDonald's sells horse burgers. Oh, Look, at this God. point, I'd fucking believe it. If you go to Montana, yeah. they sell horse burgers. Oh. Like it's not. We're just now. I'm not gonna lie. Oh. I would. I would totally eat one. I've seen horse meat, and that shit looks amazing. Oh my god! I had it in France. It was fantastic. Yeah, the rest of the world eats them because they don't have Mr. Ed. Right. Mr. Ed ruined it for us. We can't eat them because thank you. Okay, James. If people want to get a hold of you, how can they reach you? Don't. <laughs> uh, Simply Serpents on Facebook or Simply Underscore Serpents on Instagram or Simply Bio on all those as well. You can contact us on Simply Bio. Make sure I got that out there for Tracy. Uh, if you want to get a hold of the podcast, it's the Reptile Gumbo Podcast at Instagram, Facebook, and at gmail.com. Uh, in in two months, well, in a month and a half, we will hopefully be coming live from the round two. I we'll think. hopefully be coming live from the Reptile Gumbo Podcast studio, which again, is, is going to be fun and again we're going to we want a lot of y'all's input again robert needs a name for his segment of random ass shit he saw on facebook this week so if you've got an idea for that shoot us some names we're all for that if you have an idea for a segment you'd like to watch if any of y'all have a guest out there that you would like us yeah. to have on if you're like oh i'd really like to hear so-and-so's take on this we'll reach out to them and have them on really i started this podcast so that people out there could be more involved in this podcast so you're not just listening and so that's one thing I'm looking forward to being able to do the, the live phone calls. So for goalie. Yes, we'll have a we'll have a bread a bread sponsor. But <laughs> <laughs> so 36 sleeping nights, guys. Oh that's when the movers come. Nice. You say to... that I haven't started packing nearly enough, but it'll <laughs> get there. Once he's not in my space and he's in your space. Whoa. Then I'll. Yep. <laughs> <clears throat> Once I go live with Robert again. That's right. It's like we have custody over you and we're just passing you back. And but forth. I get two Christmases. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, we're gone. That's it. We've talked enough shit for the night. Thank y'all for watching, listening, and being a part of this. Robert, what the hell was that? <laughs> All right, James. Enjoy your your defecation. Your YouTube time. YouTube time. Your YouTube time. Enjoy. Oh, we didn't make the poll. We got to make oh, the God. poll. Your YouTube time. <laughs> Thank y'all for listening. We will see. You, well, not really see y'all next week. You'll see or hear us next week. Robert, I'll, I'll see talk you this to you weekend, later. John Grant. Yeah, John. I miss you, John Grant. Bye, bye John Grant. Bye. Homeless. Herpticulture experts, where Robert describes the wandering comments of the reptile social media. <laughs> uh, I <right>. like it. <laughs> oh, my Lord. We'll talk to everybody later. Good night. Bye. Maybe.
It it's not gonna let us. It's not gonna let us broadcast. leave. <laughs> it's not letting us leave. We're still alive. Oh my gosh. Oh geez. Guys, we don't get to go. We are trapped here because my internet. It's so bad it won't let us lock. <laughs> How does that out. work? How are we able to do this? Oh, okay. Well, I'm going to keep cooking. Well, I try while to... you trying to disconnect. Can anybody still hear us? Anybody out there? I wonder if it is a lot. I mean, yep, John oh, yeah, yeah, it is. John Gale. Gale. <laughs> it literally won't let me. How do you end something that it won't let you end? Maybe I can end it. Let's see. No, I can't do it. No, I can just can't. leave the studio. <laughs> Darren wants another two hour. No, Darren. I uh, mm-hmm. I got plenty of TV to watch. All right, so well, I'm just going to leave. Tra- Go Tracy has a short drive to the show, and I have a long drive. Was that a short joke about Tracy? Uh, no, but it wasn't. It is now. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to back power down. I am. I'm just going to back out of this. We'll see how it goes. All right, I'm gone. Bye-bye. Bye, y'all.